What's happening, y'all? Welcome back to another live with your boy. Welcome back to another live with your boy. I need to change this color on this thing. Yeah, let's make it warm, but not too warm. God dang, that makes me look crazy. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Fly on in. Fly on in before we get started. Where are all my people from today? Where we got yesterday? We had Mexico. We had Texas, uh, Louisiana, Florida, New Jersey, Virginia, and in New York, I want to say. Who all in the building today? Who all in the building today? For all y'all that's new, Coach Brian in the building, holistic wellness coach, weight loss and wellness coach, specializing in detoxification. But when you come on these Q&As, y'all can ask anything. I try to answer all the questions to the best of my knowledge and whatever I don't know. Guess what? I'm going to figure it out for you. Or I'm going to just say I don't know it because we ain't got time to be going crazy up here. All right, we got Chicago in the building, Virginia in the building. That's what I'm talking about. What's going on? Panama in the building. Oh, y'all too. Y'all, y'all tuning in, tuning in. That's what I'm talking about. And I know y'all, for all the, new, all the regular people I'm seeing up in here, I know I'm a little early. I know I'm going to come on here a little bit later throughout the day, but uh, I didn't have any consultations today. So I had a, I kind of turned into an off day. We're uh, we updating the website, updating the protocols, updating the products, because I want to make sure that as we move forward um, going into the next year, we don't want to wait till next year to prepare for it. We just want to have it done now. A few little more tweaks we got to make and like adjust a little few things on the website, but other than that, we'll be good. But Last we left off, y'all, we was talking about hypersensitivity. So if you new to the channel, throw your questions down here. Say what? Oh, we got London and Texas in the building. That's what I'm talking about. Houston in the building. Um, throw your questions down here. Anything y'all want to talk about, as long as it pertains to holistic health, blah, blah blah, all that type of stuff. But yeah, last time we left off, we was talking about hypersensitivity. We was talking about um, a little bit of increasing our vitality, increasing our uh, endurance, you know, and for women, making sure that, you know, you still, well, not you still, but making sure that our health and wellness are in places to not only receive and enjoy the pleasures that comes with, you know, heated fellowship, as we like to say, but making sure that we're taking the time to uh, be one with ourselves, to be one with the things that bring us joy, to be one with the things that take us to the next level, you know? So what I would advise everybody to do before we hop into the next subject is, you know, if there's ever a deficit within your life when it comes down to anything, you know, it's like you need to make sure that you're uh in a place of, I like to say gratitude. You know, it's like you if you if you don't have no gratitude, man, it's like, what, what are you really doing? And y'all know me, I like to answer these emails while I'm on here as well. So if y'all see me wandering off, just give me, just look, deal with me. But, um, but yeah, bro, like you gotta be, you gotta be grateful. But at the same time, you have to make sure that you're in a place of, uh, fixing any, de any deficit that's in your life, you know? What's going on, people? What's going on? Okay, I see the questions starting to roll in. Questions starting to roll in. All right. Energy efficiency. So the three, I'm going to say four. The four herbs that you can work on or you can take one ginseng. In, uh, I would say Siberian ginseng. That's my favorite. But number one, we have ginseng. Number two, we have go to cola. Number three, we have salt palmetto. And three, I mean four, we have cola. So for any t for any if you have any type of uh, fatigue or you have energy deficiency and stuff like that, you need herbs for that. The four herbs that I recommend are Siberian ginseng, go to cola, salt palmetto, and cola. But I will also say too, get your adrenal glands checked, get your kidneys checked, because a lot of our adrenaline, a lot of our energy, you know, that's all hormonal. It's metabolic, but it's hormonal. So you want to make sure that your pituitaries, you know, your thyroids, all that stuff is firing off right. Your adrenals is functioning properly. Your kidneys is functioning properly. And um, especially if you're a guy, a lot of berries. Berries are really, really good for our endocrine system. It's really, really good for our uh, stamina. It's really, really good for life in general when it comes down to males. So please. Take the time to dive into that and clean out your diet, too. We oftentimes don't address the diet. You know, we're like, well, let's take some herbs for this. We get on vitamin B complex. Oh, yeah, and supplemental vitamin B complex is what I would suggest. But we oftentimes don't uh, address the diet. You know, a lot of trans fats, a lot of that fried food and stuff like that, that's not good. Processed food, fast food is not good for you. It sucks, but look, you just got to learn how to cook for yourself. You know, I'm not saying all fast food places are bad, but most of them are. They don't, you don't know what's going in there. You just know I'm, well, I'm going to get the prime example. Everybody know Chick-fil-A. Oh, I'm going to Chick-fil-A. I'm going to get me some waffle fries and some the tenders and the, the cookie and the, the crumble, this, that, and the third, all type of stuff. Tastes good. Yeah, it's all, whatever, all that type of stuff. But, you know, people eat that every day. And if you're eating that every day, 
Yeah, you're going to have erectile dysfunction. Yeah, your hormones are going to fly down. Yeah, you're going to be tired. Yeah, your sleep is going to be horrible. Yeah, you're going to start getting stomach punches. Yeah, you're not going to want to be doing X, Y, and Z throughout the day. Why? It's because you're not giving your body anything to work with. Now, like I said before, the four herbs that I recommended, they do work and they're really great for energy, but at the same time, give them something to work with. Y'all know I'll say this for the longest time. Herbs are energetic. They're electric. So the moment you take the things that's designed to actually give you energy and they get inside the system and it's like, well, you you putting this here, but it's like, what well, we got to work with? We ain't got nothing to work with, you know, so give your body something to work with. Good, uh, Great question, though. Great question. Let me keep scrolling down. What's going on? How y'all doing? Panama in the building. Chicago in the building. Minnesota in the building. All right, we got a lot of people today. But yeah, anytime it comes down to energy, bro, that would be the, my top four herb suggestions for you. Because why not? Why not decide to actually take the time? Excuse me, y'all. Why not take the time to uh, increase your vitality, increase your energy? You know, do what you have to do for the betterment of yourself. Indianapolis in the building. Okay, we got everybody up in here today. Once again, for all the new people, my name is Coach Brian, holistic uh, wellness and weight loss specialist. You know, that's what I do. Y'all can check out my page for all of my clients and stuff I talk about and blah, 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 blah. We come on the live. We ask questions. It's not, I do have things I like to talk about, but I try to answer everybody's questions. Like a lot, a lot of people have been coming to me with the, ever since I dropped the, oh, we got Louisiana in the building. That's where I'm from. Uh, what's going on, Landison? But, um, a lot of people have been coming to me with, uh, a lot of, well, they, they'll go and they'll slide in my DMs about it. They don't really want to put that in the comment section, but about menopause and thyroid dysfunction and stuff like that. You know, what's going on, Brittany? Um, and, that, and that's okay. If you don't want to ask anything on here and you want to ask it more privately, I, I answer all my DMs anyway. I always check them. So, I'm that, y'all be feel free. Come on through, ask the questions. But I will address this, though. You know, it's like when it comes down to menopause, we already talked about how it's the apex. We talked about uh, the hormonal changes. We talked about the symptoms. We talked about the etiology. We talked about the dietary, supplemental, and uh, alternative agents that comes with all of that. But I would hope that you don't think that this is the end. A lot of people come to me. Talking about, oh, I'm getting older and I don't feel the same as that in the third. And that's true. You know, your body will change as you get older. But just because you hit menopause, because you got people that's in their 20s hitting menopause. But it, note that that's a sign of your vitality. That's a sign of your thyroid pituitary functions. You know, so now granted, we age, things happen. That's a part of life. I understand that. But you don't have to go through menopause and just be stuck in the what was me part and stuck with the hot flashes and stuck with the this, that, and the third. You know, I have family members, all of that close to me that went through it, came to me for help. Clients that went through it came to me for help. And they, in their 60s, you know, I got a poor connection. There we go. All right. Let me know y'all still up in here. They said my connection was weak, which is weird because I'm on the Wi-Fi. But I'm about to close some tabs on my computer. <laughs> on my computer. Just to make sure. Let's see. Let's see. Somebody said an active thyroid. So, okay, you still up in here. So you don't want to ask the question. Perfect. So we call it, well, I call it, I ain't going to say we. I call it hypoparathyroidism. And I, th I believe I talked about it on my page, but if not, I'll talk about it again. So hypoparathyroidism is a disorder of the uh, parathyroid gland with excessive secretion of the parathyroid. Uh, parath that word always beats me up. The para uh, parahormone, parathormone, parathormone. There it goes. That word just butchered me. I'm gonna say it again. So hyperparathyroidism is the disorder of the uh, parathyroid gland, gland with excessive secretion of the hormone. So this leads to high levels of calcium in the blood and the leaching of calcium from the bone. So people that suffer with things like this, they always thirsty. You know, they're always using the bathroom and it's in large quantities. They could barely drink water, but they're gonna use they're gonna use the bathroom. It's gonna be a lot coming out of them. They're not really hungry. Um, the physical weakness is like at an all time high. Oftentimes you see highly constipated, oftentimes back and forth with nausea. The high blood pressure is, I think about it, it goes in conjunction with that because we talked about the other day how, how blood pressure in general, I think about it as the quality of the blood, rather how high or low it is. Uh, and also it's associated with um, pancreatitis and uh, peptic ulcer, if you want to dive a little bit deeper into that. But when it comes out to hyperparathyroidism or um, an overworking thyroid, most of the causes, not saying that you have one, but most common causes is a tumor on one of the glands or swelling of all four. You know, because you have your adrenal glands, you have your kidneys and stuff like that. Not saying that you have that, but that's kind of the causes for that. So if you want, let me think. So if you want a tea, what's a good tea formula? I can give you a, let's see, go to cola. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay, go to cola, red clover, goat's rue. 
bladder whack. And you put um, a teaspoon of each into like some a cup of boiling water. And I'd say like, well, I'm saying a cup of boiling water. Just get your water boiling. I like to boil mine as the water. I like to do it like as the um, the water's boiling. So about 15 minutes. And then I put mine, if it's not simmering, I just turn it off. I let it sit for another 10 to 15 minutes just to like get it darker, a little bit stronger. And then you take that, that's your one cup, three times daily. And if you do it like that, you couple that with a, a nice good fruit juice um, fast. Or you can do like a mono fast like I talked about in my other video the other day. You'll be pretty good. All right, all right, all right. All right, everybody, okay, good. Everybody responded. Everybody said it was back in. Here. I don't know why. Yeah, that's the first time. My my connection never did nothing like that before. I have that. I had three taken out. See what I'm saying? And it's typically tied to that. It doesn't. That's because it's more so. It's one is systemic, and two, it's on the the latter part of the condition. You know, like once your thyroids really get to that exertion part, and it's like, oh my god, because you gotta think about them as sister glands. You know, cousin sister glands. How you want to think about? It, they function together. So whenever there something is imbalanced, it's not going to function how it needs to. So the metabolic, you gotta think about it. If you nauseous, you're always thirsty. Uh, you're not really hungry. Things of that nature. That's all deals with metabolic. Well, the metabolism. So the pituitary and the thyroids, they rule that area. So anytime that you're in balance, you're not going to have an appetite. You're not going to really want to eat because your body wants to cleanse. Your body wants to get on a whole bunch of fruit juice. Your body wants to get on the herbs. It wants to heal. Like Think about dogs whenever they get sick. The last thing they do is eat. They don't eat, actually. They'll go eat like some herbs or some grass outside. That's why I, I keep certain. Like I watch when my dog, prime example, she just walked right up. Uh, <laughs> but when my dogs get sick, I'll see, or if they get like stomach bugs, I'll see what they're eating in the yard, like what type of grass that they're eating. And I purposely don't cut that area and it's grown and it actually is not grass. It grows into like this little kind of budding flower type thing and they go straight to it. And ever since then, it's rare that their stomachs act, act up. Granted, one of my dogs had like a, um, she had an abscess and like the nose assist in the back right side of her leg. Don't know how that came here, but she's good now. Everything's cool. But yeah, just, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, the body works like that. Uh, let's see. What would you recommend to help with being more active when going through menopause? The same herbs I just suggested not too long ago and the ones we talked about earlier, the, uh, anti-fatigue herbs, as far as like the, uh, ginseng and stuff like that, that we, in the salt palmetto that we talked about, uh, go to cola and what was the other one? I think the last one was cola itself, but all of that goes hand in hand. Like I'm the herbs that I'm going to be suggesting for you guys is to not only help the situation, but to alleviate because a lot of people are looking for alleviation. A lot of people want to feel good again. A lot of people want to feel vital again. And that's one of the biggest things that I preach is like, if you get your blood quality up, if you get your diet up, you know, if you eating right and you cleansing right. And as the seasons change, we're fasting. Prime example, all y'all that follow me, we know that the spring equinox is coming March slash uh, April. What we're going to do look the same thing we did earlier this year. We're going to fast through it. We're going to go through. I'm going to walk everybody through it like I did earlier this year. And we're going to have the same result as last time. People was getting off of medicine. People was getting, because it's physical and spiritual. People was getting uh, money left and right. People, mental disorders was going away. You know, people's kids was doing it with us. Everybody was doing fine. You know, it's like, that's the goal. That's the purpose. But they don't tell people that, like, like I said in my other fasting video not so long ago, they're not really telling people that, oh, you need to fast. You know, it's like, think about how many other cultures, you know, that have, that doesn't have as much access to like the medicines and the plants and stuff that we have, but they're healthier than us. Why? They eat better. They move around more. They tend, everything comes strictly, strictly from the land to the plate. And on top of that, they fast and you go research blue zones. Y'all see they're the most organic and long living people, the most active people. And no, they're not in the gym going because everybody be like well i don't feel like going to the gym you don't have to just move around they're not in the gym benching 225 trying to be swole not to say that's a bad thing i like going to the gym but at the same time it's like they're moving I, you already know my slogan motion is lotion the more that you move around especially as you age around you will see a significant difference in your joint and ligament health because you decided to move around and stay active rather than to be sedentary and sit still all day it makes a difference you don't have to be bench pressing and lifting all these weights all day every day even though it does help but if that's not your thing move decide to move but I'm, let me move on to the next question what if you've never had hot flashes before well that's good if you if you never if you're going through menopause and you didn't have that that's just good that's a symptom that you didn't have to go through that's a symptom that your that your body doesn't have to experience but i still would say if you're in that process to use the herbs that i suggested or the other things that i suggested for you to where you can kind of stay on track and do what you have to do kidney and bone disease what give me one give me one in particular because it, it, it 
it's two different things because like it's so broad of a, it's so broad of a topic. I'll just I'll just say this and keep it until you give me something specific. I'll keep it general. I'll say this. So anytime you have any type of kidney disease, because I don't like the word autoimmune disease, even though we understand it, that's how that's the terminology for it. That's how blah blah blah. Cool. The reason why I don't address it as autoimmune disease is because you got to think about how your how your lymphatic system and your filtration slash kidneys, um, which is, I mean, granted it's all tied, but you know how all of the, how all of those things work in conjunction. We have two kidneys. We have two adrenal glands. On, well, one adrenal gland on top of each kidney, which gives us two adrenal glands. And the porous thing that we call a skin, the outer layer of our body, that's technically our third kidney. Things can go in and out of it. It can be absorbed. We absorb sunlight. We absorb topical creams. We absorb lotion. We absorb whatever, you know, all that type of stuff. You know, so anytime you have any type of kidney disorder, that's your body saying, like, I'm having a hard time filtering. I'm having a hard time processing because the body's going to talk to you. Granted, the body's going to always do what's best for itself, regardless of how you feel about it. The body just wants to survive, you know. So but if you have a kidney problem, things of that nature, you your body is saying, OK, you're putting things inside of me. Or there's something in here on top of what you put inside of me that I can't move, that I can't heal. I can't let it out. I can't whatever. You have to give me something that's astringent. Astringency is one of the best ways to get deep tissue cellular restoration and detoxification. We talked about Dr. Robert Morris. I believe it was a live or two ago. We talked about how he was helping his cancer patients uh, with the all grape diet, grape and grapefruit juice. Why? Because if you even if you was to you don't even need a microscope. If you cut open a grape and you look at it, don't it look like it got like little bristles and stuff in it? Well, that's the astringency of it. On a cellular level, almost every part of the, the molecular structure of the grape looks like that. And when it goes, even the juice, whenever you, you consume it, it's going in and it's moving stuff out of the way and it's brushing this off and it's hitting this and doing X, Y, and Z. You couple that with some good herbs, you fast out, you give the body something to work with, boom, now you can filtrate again. And when it comes down to bones, you got to think about how bones, what, what do bones sit in all day? Bones sit in blood all day. They're in between muscles and ligaments and stuff like that. You know, so work on the quality of your blood. But if you also, but keep in mind too, you probably wouldn't have a bone uh, disease if you didn't have a kidney disease. Not saying that you do, but I'm just, you know, that's the ones that you put together. So I just won't link it like that. You probably wouldn't have a bone disease if you, uh, if you didn't have a kidney disease. So you got to think about the lymphatic system as a whole. Like we talked about, let's, let's just take it all into account of it. You have your lymph nodes, all the lymph tract pathways and stuff like that. You have the kidneys, you have the, um, the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder, all of those type of things. All of that pushes and works into one big system that gets eliminated through the urinary tract or through, you know, your sphincter using the bathroom defecation, blah, 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 all that type of stuff. And if the body can't filtrate, it's like a clogged toilet. You got turds and stuff. I hate to use this terminology, but you got turds and stuff flying up out the toilet because all the lymph fluid, you know, that's the water. It can't push the stuff through the pipeline to get to the septic tank, to get to the filtration, to put the water back. It, the, the system's broken, you know. So, of, yeah, the bones are going to get raggedy. Yeah, the heart may do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, all these other systems might break down because nothing can come out how it needs to or it's not coming out in its entirety. So think about it like that, and then you'll see how most of these things are systemic. And when I say systemic, it's like a, it's like y'all know how when people um line up dominoes and stuff like that, and they hit it, and it's and like it goes around like that. So like the same thing. That's how the body. And when I say how the body works, but that's like how illnesses kind of work. It's like once one thing hits another thing, and it grabs another thing, and the momentum just keeps going and going and going and going. Okay, cool. How do we? And then it doesn't stop until what? Until something, it doesn't, until it doesn't run into anything else, then it stops. Okay, cool. Think about the body the same way. If we have all of these things piling up and hitting back to back to back, we need to find a way to stop that momentum and redirect it or just to cease it because it's systemically tearing up the body. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's no problem. Yeah, it, it, it is. Yeah, you're right about that. What about, uh, okay, on the large intestine? So, Okay, I gotta I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful when I say this. I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna use this the wrong way. I think about it like this. When it comes down to just large intestines health and in, intestinal health in general, the only times you'll have intestinal problems is when things ferment too long and are improperly inside of the uh intestines. Something gets caught up in there and it calcifies. Or you have obstruction or you have like little knots, nodules and twists and stuff like that. So anytime, I don't care who it is, it could be the healthiest person in the world. If you have obstruction within the intestinal wall, the track, all that type of stuff, it's going to cause problems. 
it's going to cause high levels of inflammation because you got to think about how things even get inside the body. Let's, let's just say you, I wish I had like a fruit or something. All I had was tea so far today. I'm fasting. But say you ate a, you ate a, a fruit. The fruit hits the system. The salivary glands automatically start shooting the digestive enzymes on it. It's going through the esophagus, things of that nature. You have mucoid ducts. You have a bunch of mucoid ducts. So they're coating it with what it needs to get through, and it's lubricating, and it's getting down there. Then it gets to the stomach. The stomach is just crushing and squeezing, releasing more digestive enzymes, and then it's getting to the uh, ascending transverse colon, which is parallel, and is in conjunction with the digestive enzymes and salt, yeah. digestive salts that come from the pancreas, the liver, things of that nature. And imagine all of that work. All of the, the, the absorptions and releases that's going on with that piece of matter that has gone inside your body and hit the ascending colon. I mean, no, no, yeah, hit the ascending colon, hit the transverse colon, and it gets stuck. Or as in the descending colon, so trying to get to the sphincter to come out, but it gets stuck. So now that it's stuck, you have something blocking it. Well, it's blocking everything else. And a lot of absorption actually happens in the intestinal wall as well. So all it's going to do, if it's just guck is just going to sit there it's either going to harden it's going to ferment even more or it's going to putrefy fermentation putrefication pretty much almost the same thing but y'all get what i'm saying so it's like you have to open up what i call what we call the detox pathways so you need to start flushing so it's like okay well if i have these obstructions i have all this inflammation i have all these cramps i'm gassy all the time i always have indigestion my breath stink because it is a form of bacterial um imbalance whenever your mouth's hot i'm saying we say hot down here but stink but also, it's really your gut. You, if your gut's bad, your breath's bad, period. Um, but that's the times, of, okay, I need to get on all liquids. I need to get some cascara sagrada. You know, I need to get some um, some aloe vera gel, the stalk itself. Get that in there, lubricate up some slippery elm. Get it in there, lubricate it up. That's my dog, y'all ignore them. Um, you know, like, go on a fruit, a fruit flush, a water flush. I mean, a fruit juice flush, a water flush. And then let all that stuff come out. Let the obstructions come out. Let the body have time to heal. That. And once again, we literally just talked about fasting not so long ago, and look where we're back at. That's essentially how all of that stuff moves back and forth. It's not that deep, y'all. Like, granted, we have to understand the specifics of why certain things are happening. But when you really break down the body and all its categories and stuff like that, it's only so deep. The reason why we have to have specialists in certain areas because I can only imagine one person. I'm not even going to get to that. But, yeah, it, it's think about the stomach like that. Think about the intestines and the intestinal health like that. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know what that is. I don't think you spelled that the right way. Let me make sure. I'm, let me make sure you're talking about the right thing. But you spelled that kind of weird. Oh, that's what you meant to say. Okay, cool. Hey, Moonbeam, what's up in here? What's, what's happening? Okay, when it comes down to like diastolic and systolic numbers. Uh, once again, you got to think about the kidney function. You got to think about the quality of the blood. So if the numbers are high, let, let's just think about systolic pressure in general. So it's like, that's the top pressure, right? You have how much is flowing through, how fast it's flowing through, how it's working, all that type of stuff. But you also have the elasticity of the veins of the cardiovascular system. So if your numbers are showing that, okay, the quality of the blood and the pressure of the blood is just crap right now. We, we're going to take some step backs and we're going to talk about like uh, how we talk about like high blood pressure and things of that nature. If that's what's going on and if that's what's happening for you, you have to start purifying your blood. Like, and I don't even want to, I'm saying that and people go like, well, he's saying purify. I don't want even to sound like, like, oh, well, I got to, I just don't want it to sound so extreme. It's just, I'm just trying to be specific. Don't run with this and think it's an extreme thing. It's just more so you have to clean out your system. You know, so like, prime example, I'm 27. So, if I had those high type of numbers, nine times out of 10, I'm eating horribly, especially if I'm this young and my numbers are that bad, I'm eating horribly. But the same thing we talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, at the beginning of the live, it's still the same principle. It's still the same. I need to flush. I need to get on this. I need to get on that. I need to get on these herbs and do X, Y, and Z. It's all the same thing. I'm not going to say this. It's the same thing as far as like how you would approach anemia, but any type of blood. When it comes down to, to pressure, quality, elasticity, blockage, cholesterol, all that type of stuff, it's the quality of the blood. You clean that out. You filtrate that out. Prime example, it's not for everybody, but a lot of blood pressure clients that I have, the first thing they'll tell you to do that I, I typically tell them to do every morning, start your day off with some warm cayenne water. About like 
eight ounces, put you like a little sprinkle or however much Kanye you could take up in there or whatever, swirl it up nice and good, chug it down. It's not something for you to taste. It's something for you to just chug down real quick. That goes directly to the bloodline. That goes directly to the bloodstream, and then it dilates. It expands. It lets everything fly through. But let's take it a step further. What if I'm still eating the same, but I'm on these medications and or I'm on these herbs that open up my blood pathway so my circulation is better, but I'm still eating like trash. So all I'm doing is pushing low quality, horrible, thick blood throughout my system. The quality and the nutritional value of my body or my bloodstream has yet to change, but it's just moving around more efficiently. That's horrible. I'm sorry to tell you. I'm not saying that's your problem, but I'm just speaking in general. That's horrible. So that's why I oftentimes say focus on the things that's going to benefit your body. Focus on the Inconatia. Focus on the burdock root. Focus on the golden seal. Focus on the cayenne. Focus on the alfalfa. Do, do I need to keep going with the list? Like there's, there's so many things that people can do to just basically eat better and do better. And, and look, you know what? I'm going to take a step back. Let's say you don't know how. Let's say, you, and it's not me pushing my coaching pro, pro, program, my one-on-ones. I'm just about to speak real. Like, let's say you genuinely don't know how. You've never had nobody to teach you how to count calories. You've never dove into that world. You don't know what's healthy. You don't know what's not healthy. You're just assuming the flat tummy teas and the pills is all natural just because they say it is. And blah, 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 blah. That's you. And no harm, no foul, no shame. That's your life. That's where you at. Ignorance can be bliss. Not meaning that you're willfully stupid or, will, or willfully not knowing it, but it's just blissful because you don't know anything else and you're doing what you feel is best, which is fine. But I'm here to tell you that... If you was to, and it's very easy to find. If you can, if you can go to YouTube, if you could text your people, you could be on Instagram watching me right now. You know how to go on YouTube. You know how to go on Google. Type in how to find, or better yet, calorie and or macro calculator. There's apps for that. All you gotta do is put in your age, your weight, your height, how active you are, and whether you're trying to maintain surplus or go into deficit. We talked about this many videos ago. If you want to lose weight, you have to eat less than the amount of energy that you're expending on a day-to-day basis. If you want to stay the same weight, eat the same amount of food or a caloric intake that you're doing for energy that you're putting out. If you want to gain weight, you got to eat a crap ton. But whether you're trying to gain, maintain, or lose, the quality of food. I'm not even going to give you anything specific. I'll just say this. Here's how, here's how you increase the quality of your food without even trying to. Without even thinking about a specific food, here's this, that, and the third. Make sure that... 80% of what you're eating every day is fresh produce. USDA organic, like fresh produce. Make sure that you have, if you're going to eat meat, couple that with leafy greens. Like make sure that you have more leafy greens. You have enough leafy greens on your plate to wrap up your meat two, three times over. It's going to help the digestive process. And if you're going to eat meat, eat lean. Eat really lean meat. Make sure it's free range. If you're going to eat eggs and chickens and stuff like that. Once again, I'm not giving y'all nothing specific because, you know, I just want to keep it very. I know everybody's not going to stick to one type of diet. That's just me. I know what's better. I know what's this, that, and the third. But I want to speak very generally just so I can help y'all out. Start making sure that 80% of what you're eating is fresh, organic, raw produce. And the 20% is whatever else you want it to be. I'm not saying go eat little hot debit cakes all day and zebra cakes and honey buns and apple pies and chocolate chip cookies i know it sounds good but don't don't indulge too much on that focus more so on the organic stuff and you you'll let six months go by you couple that with being more aware of how much you're eating and tracking like oh, i'm only gonna eat two meals a day like prime example i only eat once a day i drink fruit juice uh herbal tea and water all day I have a meal in between, depending on my schedule, either I'm going to eat at 3 o'clock or 6 o'clock. That's typically the only two times. And if I'm talking right now, I'm probably not eating until 6. And that's it. After I eat, it's water for the rest of the day. And it's you You will see. Not only am I able to maintain and actually gain weight on this because my stomach can absorb a lot better now because I may be positive. So I got to watch what I eat because my stomach's sensitive. But at the same time, it's like if you start doing that, You eat two meals a day or two, three meals a day or you're watching your caloric intake and you're sourcing better. You're making sure it's organic and fresh. You're, oh, hi, what's your skin routine, child? Oh, you done lost all that weight? Girl, you look good. Oh, what happened? Your your clothes look all big on you now. Oh, you, oh, it's like you a whole nother person and you ain't even do nothing. This is, this, this ain't even you going into the nitty gritty of tracking like how many grams of protein, carbs, and fats, and you're only eating this food, and you're on these specific herbs, and blah, 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 like I do with my one-on-one clients. You ain't even doing that. You just sourcing properly. 
And if you could, because, ooh, I'm going to make some people mad when I say this, but I got to say it. You know something is wrong or you know or you know you're not doing something right if you're on a diet that promotes calorically small or like what I'm saying is like the food that you're going to subject yourself to has little to any caloric volume on it like it takes a lot to equal a lot you have to eat a lot of it to equal a lot and you still walking around big and with all these diseases and stuff like that and, and chronic illnesses and underlying medical conditions you're not doing something right Prime example, if you go to be a vegetarian, fruitarian, vegan, X, Y, and Z, all that type of stuff, there's no reason why you should be plant-based or vegan and be big. I'm sorry, y'all. Like, and I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm really not. But if, especially if you go from a, most people have been eating meat all their life. To go from eating, you mean to tell me you're going from eating meat, a whole bunch of meat, rice, this, this and I'm from the South. So I'm going to call a spade a spade. All this oxtail, all this beef, all this, that, and the third, you eat that all day, and then you eating all this rice and these beans and all this fried this and smothered this. And then it's, it's good. Y'all don't get me wrong. It's good. But like, that's the mostly the diet, a lot of breads and starches. And then you switch to something that takes two bowls of broccoli or spinach or kill or whatever to equal all of this doggone caloric intake. And you, and you ain't dropped not one pound. That means you lying somewhere. I'm sorry. That means you, I, I be having the hardest time believing people that say, Oh, I'm fruitarian. Oh, I'm 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 vegan and I'm plant based, and they still be big. No, you on that processed plant based because you know they got the Beyond Meat now. Because everybody just want to substitute the real meat for the fake meat. You got the Beyond Meat that you're on, all that type of stuff that's calorically dense. It's not real actual raw stuff, and you're trying to tell that stuff down. And granted, some people just don't know better, but this is this is the truth. I know it's hard, but this is the truth. It's like if you if you subject yourself to a cleaner, less calorically dense, and more nutritious part of diet, and you still are borderline 300 pounds you're lying to yourself you're not doing something right you know so what i would implore you to clean out your system do it the right way it may not be as tasty make it as tasty find it that bro especially us black people we know how to make anything taste good make it make sense just like y'all could go follow the shade room and this that and the third just like y'all following me for health stuff go follow because y'all know i ain't no doggone chef i keep the same thing over and over again and be fine with it that's just me Go find a vegan chef on here. Go find a plant. And go find one that promotes nutrition and that look like they're nutritious. I would be damned if I'm on here talking about, I'm Coach Brian, the wellness and weight loss specialist, blah, blah, blah. And I'm six feet tall. And I'm damn near 300 pounds. Can't walk. Can't breathe. I'm my stomach big. I can't fit my clothes. I got all this stuff going on with me. Then what are you like? Would you would you really follow me? Let's be honest. Would y'all really follow me? And, and like I said, I'm not, bro, look, I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm not trying to bash nobody. But if we're going to speak in the world of realism, because I'm seeing the numbers go down. Y'all don't like what I'm saying. I don't care. I'm going to speak the truth. If if we're going to call a spade a spade and be what it is, guess what? This is what we have to do. Insanity is to do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That's the actual definition of it. I want to lose weight. I want to get off of this. I want to blah, 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 blah. But you can't let go of the fast food. You can't let go of X, Y, and Z. It's hard. I know it's hard. You've been eating a certain type of way for 10, 20, 30 plus years. You have habitual nature at this point when it comes down to how you eat. But guess what? If you think about it, a lot of people eat for the emotional pleasure and they don't eat for the health side of it. And they fail to realize that, okay, once you actually start living to eat for the health side of it, you turn that into something that tastes good. Because there's very there's so many healthy options that you can eat that actually taste good. You know, and it's like once you start doing that, oh, well, then I can I can still somewhat be emotionally tied to my food, even though that's not the safest thing to do. I can still be emotionally tied to my food some type of way. But at least I'm emotionally tied to the things that bring me wellness, that brings balance, that heals me. You know, there's literal foods that act as slow poisons to the body. They're not going to tell you all that, especially like, bro, if especially if your blood type can't take it. And if your body like people, that, well, granted, we all like toast intolerant to a certain extent. But like for people that's really gut sensitive to like cheese and stuff like that. And you keep eating cheese and you always constipate it and you always have acne. Guess what? It's because you're not eating properly. I'm going to stop yelling. I'm going to stop. You know what? I'm bantering at this point. I'm going to ask y'all. I'm asking some more y'all questions. But this is this is why people like me will all. Ooh, I, I'm going to say it. This is why people like me will always have clientele. And as y'all can see, I'm not rich from it. You know, I really be doing it for the sake of the people. My goal is to have a farm. Once I have a farm and all of that, y'all probably want me to see Coach Brian. No, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I'll probably sell my herbs and stuff out there on the shops and all of that. But as far as like me having to be out here and building, like I'm going to tend to my community, tend to my farm. This is a lot of work. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. It's a lot of work. But what I will say is, is like you have to, this is the last thing I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone, y'all. 
you have to start living your life for yourself. You have to start thinking about why you're in your 30s and 40s and you look like you in your 60s and you feel like you in your 80s. How you can wake up in the morning. And even if you, I, I'm, I'm going to leave that, that metaphor alone because I have a client that's, that's in her 60s. We train every day. She's healthy. We run, we run literal miles together. She may not be able to run them as fast as me because I can run a mile in four minutes. That may not be her top speed. But if we run at least two to three miles together, like we start our work off, our workout off every day with a mile. And she, prime example, she's 60. We start off with a mile. That's our warm up. We start off with a mile. We stretch after that. And then we go into weightlifting. Because uh, I bring, like, we, we link, whether it be the gym or the park. She, she loves resistance training. That lady, because I was at her birthday party now, that lady was borderline breakdancing. And she eat she eat like y'all, cause y'all know I'm ex- I'm not extremist, but I'm picky. She eats like regular people. Only difference is she sources like we was talking about earlier. Yeah, I put on you know she my she my client. I put on to some herbs. I put on to different styles of eating and things of that nature. But she still stayed true to her Southern Louisiana culture of food. And guess what? She has amazing numbers. I love when she come back from the doctor. They be like, "You 60, but you got the body of a 40 year old." And she'd be just smiling and grinning. She's showing me the, the lab work and all that type of stuff. They're like, what you doing? And she's literally just staying, like I said before, motion is low. She's staying active. Now, granted, she wasn't, I'm not even going to cap. She was always like this. She just wasn't as extreme because, like, she wasn't with me. I took her workouts to a whole nother level. I ain't even going to lie to y'all. But she's been moving and doing X, Y, and Z, building these patterns for decades. So if you start now, even even if you in your 70s, there's a lady that was that was, like, 71. She got, and she used to, I kid you not, y'all, the the video had her, like, she was sitting there walking like this. She walked like her spine was toe up. She got, she started moving. She started doing yoga, weightlifting. She, of course, she had to see a chiropractor. Spine was all over the place. Started eating better. She, uh, she's 74 now. Swole. Like, she swole for a 74-year-old. She's not on any medication. You should have seen a video of her dancing, cha-cha sliding. Oh, little white lady with a fro. Getting it. And I'm like, that's how you do it. If you, all you need is all you need is consistency, make make the good stuff good for you. Make it enjoyable. We make everything else enjoyable. For, ooh, I, I need to answer y'all questions. I'm ranting, but we make everything else enjoyable. Why not make that enjoyable? You feel me? Let me let me get to these questions, bro. Let me get to these questions. That's just life. I'm. It's not. I'm telling y'all, bro. It's like yeah, people like me take like I'm still in school. Like I, this makes year year eight or year nine i got like one more certification to go then i'm gonna be an iridologist and then i'm gonna be done i'm not going to no more school after this i'm so sick of reading well i love reading books but i'm so sick of all of this other stuff it's just i've been spending so much money but we people like us go to school for this type of stuff because we want to be a lot more locked in we want to be a lot more focused we want to be specific for y'all because i mean it does take an extra amount of knowledge to come on here and talk about x you know talk about x y and z stuff like that but i will also say that Y'all can do the same. Y'all can. Y'all know I don't gatekeep. Well, what book you answer? Blah 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 blah. What book? Nah. I tell y'all the prices of them because they're collegiate level books. I tell y'all the price, and y'all y'all typically don't get it or y'all don't care. And that's and that's no harm or foul. Not everybody want that type of information. But for the people that I I notice that do go get these books and they do go get X Y and Z. A prime example. I love this book. I got this book like two years. Well, I got the hard copy recently, but I've been having the digital copy for the longest. The uh, Herbal Medicine, the Bartram's Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. I lo- oh, I love me some book. I love me some of that book. It don't give you all the answers, but it break it down. And like it, it, it can only go so far because it's an encyclopedia. You know, it's like a thousand. It's, it's a bunch of pages. But most stuff that y'all worried about is in somebody's book. Think about the best doctor you know. Think about the best herbalist you know. They had to read something. They didn't just wake up. Now, granted, God be giving people gifts now. Don't get me wrong. God be making supercomputers. But the average person or the average doctor or whoever, your specialist, whoever you go to, they had to go to school for something. Well, how y'all know blah, blah, blah? We just like we can pick up books and we can download PDFs and we can watch these videos and blah, 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 blah. Y'all can do the same. Granted, y'all don't like to because y'all want to scroll on social media all day, be on YouTube all day. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But at least if you're struggling with something, take at least 10 to 20 minutes a day to focus on what your health condition is. Learn about it. How you got there and deal with that. You ain't got to be no scientist, no super scientist to figure out what's going on with your body. And um, y'all already know my, my three. Y'all know my three. Anatomy, chemistry, biology. If you study those three things in that particular order, anatomy, biology, and chemistry, 
watch. You everything gonna start clicking different. It's gonna start. Not granted, some stuff is on another level, but it's gonna start clicking different. I pr- I promise you, I promise you. Oh, Moon, yeah, you was on the. You know what? Prime example. One of my clients up in here, her name is Moonbeam. She was on the all grape diet, cause we had did it around the same time. We did. I did mine for like a month. I forgot how long I made her do hers for. Or how long she did hers for. It when I tell you it flushes you out on a different level. It flushes you all the way out. But it's astringent. You're going to put some in, some definitely going to come out. And especially if you're eating, only eating grapes and then you start seeing colors change and you start seeing little other things start come out. It's like, wait, what, what all this was? Sitting in your intestines. Sitting in your uh, your colon. Sitting in all that type of, but you got to you gotta let it out. You got to give it something to work with. You got to give it something to work with. Ugh. Oh my God. Uh, I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to be the bigger person. Working on myself. Working on myself. All right, y'all. I'm about to wrap this thing up too, y'all, because I gotta. I actually got to eat. So, what's up, Cree? How you doing, Cree? Do you understand Russian? No, I'm not trying to learn that either. That is a difficult language. I got one more question in me, y'all. Cause I got. I got to get up. It's almost three forty-five. Let's go down a little bit more. Wait, what am I looking at? What are these comments coming from? What y'all talking about? What the drooly faces in the hearty mode? Y'all wildin'. Y'all wildin'. That's what y'all gonna put when I'm talking about health stuff? Y'all wildin'. Y'all on some other stuff. It's a decent amount of y'all up in here, though. Let's see. I didn't read my knee next for sure. How can I start working on So, somebody just asked me. Okay, they said, uh, this is the last question I'm gonna do, y'all. I recently had an injury in my knee. The x-ray showed there was no tear, but it had water. How can I start to work on that to avoid arthritis? So, for one, I'm going to plug him. His name, uh, was his, his social media handle, is called Knees Over Toes. So please go check that man page out. Knees, like your kneecaps, over, like you're over something. Toes, like the toes on your feet. Knees over toes. Go check him out. Dude is amazing when it comes down to knee recovery. Like, he specializes in that stuff. He's had... Uh, I think he avoided certain type of surgeries. His knees was pretty much in shambles. He's in his 40s, too. Can dunk. Like, he, he worked his knees up to the point to where, like, he can dunk now. His mom, who was, like, in her 60s, I want to say, like, got her moving, bending, all that type of stuff, like, is amazing. But I'll start by saying um, one motion is lotion, but walking backwards. We don't walk backwards enough. I know that may sound crazy. But we do not walk backwards enough. The way that that works through certain ligaments and joints and certain muscles within the body, it actually strengthens it on the cellular, not a cellular level, on the deeper level. And also tibia or shin raises, however you want to think about it. Get flat up against a wall. Put your feet slightly front in front of you. Put them close together and raise your toes. And you will, you will see the muscle activate. That same muscle, because there's two more. They got one that's right underneath the toe that comes all the way up, that goes all the way to around your hip. It wraps around basically the whole leg. And then you have another muscle that's right, that's in support around like the ACL, the knee, and all that type of stuff. You start lifting up and working that, it strengthens it. It's not the same as a squat. It's not the same as a squat jump. It's not the same as a lunge. It's not the same as a hamstring curl. Nothing that. It specifically targets that supportive muscle. You start doing that on a day-to-day basis. If you have high levels of inflammation, please start icing your knee. Please start giving your body stuff that you can help because you talk about arthritis. Arthritis on a holistic level, how we perceive it, is more so crystallized waste. Being around those different type of ligaments and getting in between the joints and all types of stuff, and you get that type of pain. And once again, a lot of my arthritis people, they have sugar addictions. They have high process addictions. But more so sugar, especially the coffee drinkers. It'd be the coffee drinkers for sure. Get you Get on some dandelion root. Get on some milk thistle. And get on some uh, ginkgo biloba. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with those three. Yeah, and get on some ginkgo biloba, and you'll be good. You'll be really, really, really good. You keep moving those legs up and down with the raises, start walking backwards, but also start targeting that diet because I would hate for you to start working on these muscles and building and trying to put your body through endurance and X, Y, and Z, and you building up all this lactic acid, all these calcium deposits storing up here and there in the third, but if something is being torn down and are rebuilt, it needs it's what's feeding that what's feeding that process, what's giving it its strength, what's helping it rebuild the things that you're eating. So really source and make sure that, OK, well, these things work for me. This is for, same thing we talked about earlier. Freshly fresh produce, fresh on this. 
the juicing on this, the herbs on this, hydrate it over here. You know, you're pulling away from process. You're pulling, and, and more so too, make sure that you're gentle with yourself. Like if you know that you didn't have a hard day, and if you know for a fact that like, okay, you ain't been eating a certain type of way, that's fine. I know it takes a while for people to adjust to that, but continue to be real with yourself. Continue to tell yourself the truth. And if you need to soak, soak. If you need to have a little mental vacation or whatever, do that. But at the same time, take care of yourself. Because if you decide not to do that and you stress a lot, you're working all the doggone time, you're just doing X, Y, and Z, guess what? You're going to go in circles. You're going to stress yourself out. Now your adrenal glands overwork. Now your cortisol levels are extremely high. And now you don't know what to do with yourself. You don't know what to do with yourself. But all in all, y'all, that was my last question because I need to start getting things ready before. I got to finish learning these songs for rehearsal. I got I to gotta go play tonight at like 7. But um, y'all have a great one. I love every single one of y'all that's been up in here. Um, Well, let me see. Hold up. Doop, 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 doop. Dang, there's a lot of questions up in here. Yeah, if I didn't get to your question, shoot me a, a DM. Slide in my DMs or whatever. Link in my bio, whatever y'all want to do. Um, Support your boy. Go share the live. I'm going to post it on later, too. Um, go share the live, share some content, tag me in it, or send it to your your bar friend, your girlfriend, your boss, your whoever. Share the content. Go check out my stuff. Link in my bio. Whatever you want, all that type of stuff. But all in all, lead with love, lead with light. Make sure that you're being kind to somebody. Make sure you're being kind to yourself, and make sure you work on yourself. One thing a day. Don't try to don't try to tackle 10, 20, 30, 50, 40 different type of problems that you have. One thing a day. And even if that one thing takes you weeks to months, at least you're consistent. At least you're doing it. At least you're doing something. Let no one belittle your progress. Let no one belittle your character development. Let nothing get in your way of being the best version of you. You are in competition with nobody but yourself. I don't care who has this over you or has that much more than block. It don't matter. You focus on you. Because when it all is said and done and you got to lay down in that bed or wherever you're going to be at in your final breath, you're only leaving with you. So make sure that you treat yourself kindly. Enjoy the life that you live. No matter what circumstances that you're in, focus on, be great, find something to be grateful about as you work on yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. Don't make it too hard on yourself. If you need help, get help. If you need information, go get the information. If you're tired of being sick and fed up, do something about it. But leave with love and leave with intuition. I'm out, y'all. Y'all have a good one. God bless.